eastern Himalayas, nurturing an ancient region, an intermingling of traditions and faiths. It's one of India's lesser known regions, unexplored, remote and exotic for most. But times are changing. As a filmmaker, I have always wanted to explore the northeast of India. I'm here on a journey of discovery and exploration through India's misty mountains. I'm traveling deep into Western Meghalaya now, towards the Nokrek National Park, the land of the Gibbons. A six hour drive from Guwahati, the park is situated in the West Garo Hills, 45 kilometers from Tura. Declared a UNESCO World Heritage Site in 2009, Nokrek is part of the global network of biosphere reserves, amongst the first in the entire Northeast region. Stretching over 45 square kilometers, it is a unique ecosystem and now a major tourist destination in the Garo Hills. The Garo people the second largest tribe in Meghalaya after the Khasis make about a third of the local population. The Garos are one of the few remaining matrilineal societies in the world. Sangma Sahab. Hello sir. How are you? How are you? Wonderful to see you. Hello. Wonderful welcome to see sir, you. welcome. Well, Please be seated. Thank you. It has been a long drive but well worth it because it's amazing to see this pristine area opening up to the world. What is happening and how happy are you with the transformation that's taking place? Uh, we are very happy, sir, with the transformation which is taking place. And as you had said that the whole area has opened up. So with the weaning away of the militancy in Garo Hills, we are seeing the positive results which are coming in to this area also. We've heard great things about this being a repository of oranges. What is the story in? This place is the place where citrus indica is found, which is believed to be the progenitor of all the citrus species in the world. Actually, it is keeping that citrus species gene pool intact in the forest area, and that's why this biosphere reserve was declared initially. This Nokrek Biosphere Reserve area or Nokrek area is the source of many rivers for the entire Garo Hills. So you will see some of the biggest rivers originating from Nokrek area only, this Biosphere Reserve area only. Like Samsang, Bugi, Ganol, all those rivers are originating from this area. Garo people are predominantly farmers or the ones who practice agriculture. So these are the rivers which are feeding the agriculture fields. So this area is very unique and very important because it forms the catchment area for all the rivers of the Garo Hill. In the past decade, we have tried very hard and we have encouraged the people to go for community reserve for it. You will see that we have a Nokrek National Park area and outside it, you will see that the area belongs to the private party. So there is a difficulty for us to conserve whatever there is in the core area. So we wanted to create buffer areas. Hence, uh, we have encouraged the people to go for community reserve forest concept. Conservation and management of these forest areas is a challenge. More than 90% of the state's total area belongs to the communities, clans and district councils, with only 6% remaining under the management of the forest department. 
but the communities here in Nokrek have joined hands with the forest department to create community reserve forest, sharing the land to create a buffer area for the forest. People have accepted it and right now we are having around 22 community reserve forests around the biosphere area. Amazing, so that means communities becoming partners in conservation and protection. Yes, yes. That yep. is such a, such a wonderful thing to happen. The communities are now a partner in conservation. The awareness generation has worked. Hunting and logging are not practiced here anymore. What was once agricultural land is now a community reserve, a collective effort between the local people and the government, all towards protecting the forests of Nokre. If you would have come 20 years ago, you would have seen the entire area is in smoke because of the zooming practice. But now you will see there is no smoke at all. Nothing, I saw nothing. Yes, so it has changed drastically. And we have encouraged the people to go for horticultural crops mm. so that they can ge generate the revenue. There are always apprehensions about people coming here. So how safe is it now? It is very safe. You will see that this area has opened up. Tourist footfall has increased in the last one and a half year. Lots of people are coming, including the foreign tourists. And the roads have improved so much. Yes, yes. Roads are very improved. You have witnessed it. So there is no problem if you come and stay here. We have a lot of homestays run by the local people out here. You can taste the Garo cuisine, Garo hospitality, our way of living here. How many days do you think a person should come here for? At least two, three days, so that they can experience the feel of it. They can visit the national park, they can go around the biosphere area, they can taste the oranges, they can also buy, taste the local honey which is produced here, which is infused with the citrus flavor. And uh, you can also learn the peaceful coexistence between man and nature by coming here, experiencing here. Nokrek has a lot to offer to its visitors beyond the National Park. Local adventure enthusiast group Tura Adventure Club is working with the community at Daribok village, the last village before entering Nokrek National Park, and all this to promote rural tourism in the area. Eric. What a wonderful place to meet. Welcome, sir. Thank you, thank you. I called you especially to listen to the call of the gibbons. Oh. Since this morning, I've heard three different groups from different areas, sir. This is the so, area surrounding uh, the National Park? Yes, right? the Noctec National Park. We're just outside of the National Park area, and this is the one of the buffer areas. This mm -hmm. village is called Daribok, and it's also famous for its citrus fruits. You know, since morning I've been listening to a sound and at first I thought, what is this happening? Mm. This amazing, out of the world, resonating sound yes. of the gibbons. And they feel protected here? Yes, yes. We actually consider them sacred, sir. So um, hunting of the gibbons is not uh, allowed. And they being near the villages is considered a blessing. So what sort of work have you been doing here, Eric? As uh, a member of Tura Adventure Club, we've been trying to work with the community to help work on the rural tourism, sir. Also Local. to help them get away from Joom cultivation so that they have other means of that, earning. That is so crucial. We've uh, also worked on a few campsites. People can come and pitch their tents and uh, we have the local villagers to, who cook for them and take care of them. And It's a win-win situation if we just learn how to maintain a balance and equilibrium. Exactly, exactly. The Joom cultivation was quite destructive. Yes, it was. It uh, Usually the slash and burn technique is, was practiced here. You can still see the effects of it. A lot of stretches are still barren. 
and only now they're starting to recover. Yeah. Recover, sir. I could see there's a few bald patches. Yes, yes. But it does exactly show the transformation and the transition that's taking place. Yes. Nokrek National Park and its buffer area is home to the only species of wild Indian orange endemic to the area, the citrus indica, locally known as Memang Narang, orange of the spirit, believed to be the progenitor of all citrus fruits in the world. If you just look around, there are various different types of citrus available here, sir. So, yes, sir. it must be part of the cuisine and food as yes, well? Yes, yes, yes. And each has its own distinct flavour, sir. And this is the one that I was talking about, the uh, Mimang Narang, the citrus oh. of the spirits. This citrus. is the, yes, oh. this is supposed to be the mother of all citrus. This okay. is the original? Yes. And from this? This, it has, has branched out. out. It has yeah, sprung out. Exactly. Which is your favorite citrus? I, I think I would still stick to the orange. <laughs> I love the sweet one <laughs> yes, as well. Yes. <laughs> Hidden in the folds of a community reserve is the Sel Balgre Resort. 15 kilometers from Nokrek, in the West Garo Hills, is the Heritage Resort, built in the traditional Garo fashion. Located just 300 meters from an ancient sacred forest, this resort is a perfect stopover before heading for Nokrek or even for a few days of quiet. What a lovely place. I've always wanted to come to this part of the country and I believe this is the land of the Hulocks. Yes, it is. Hulok country. Yes, it is. And it, uh, I'm looking forward to seeing them and in the wild. You can find them on the other side. One family resides here and the oh, other family nice. resides in the sacred forest. But over the years they are improving, the population is improving because uh, we Garos, we revered them. They are supposed to be a sacred animal to us. They bring Indeed. good fortune. Yeah. So the sacred forest is the home to the Hulok Gibbons. They are called Huro. Huro. So Huro Song means the Hulok country. That is the reason why I call this place Huro Song, meaning Hulok country. How did this start? How did the journey start? What brought you here? You know, the fragile cultural ecosystem that is happening everywhere. We don't know, maybe next two years, maybe five years, the cultural identity will be gone forever. So I feel the, the need to work towards conservation of culture and the location of the sacred forest here made it ideal to set up a heritage site like this. But in spite of the fact that uh, people coming here, nothing is uh, known about this place to the outside world. Such a great opportunity for the rest of the country to see. Yes. And every time I look at one direction, I get educated. Uh, when I started this, uh, you know, like uh, there've been a lot of uh, filtering also because I don't want to be this to be mainstream. I want the world to see it, but also like uh, I want responsible people coming here. Um, That's so important. And to enjoy uh, this heritage site. This is the beginning of the sacred forest, Lovely the Selbalgre sacred forest. Uh, you know, in every uh, Garo village, a plot of land like this is set aside for the guardian spirits. This is where our forefathers put their wisdom for the generations and generations to come. This just takes your breath away. I mean, unbelievable, untouched by human beings yeah. for thousands of years. Yeah. This forest is intact thanks to the wisdom our forefathers gave us, the value they put onto 
this biodiversity, these organisms. I'm really, truly humbled, you know, it, I feel like sinking on my knees. The environmental awareness, it is not the modern thing for our forefathers. They are so intelligent that they have respect for nature, respect the trees, respect the wildlife, and they were in harmony, balanced with nature. Yeah, okay. <laughs> it's awesome. What an experience. Only on a special day, only on a special, like when we have special guests who are connected to nature, they come out like this. Oh, those are very shy animals. Yeah, I'm, I'm surprised because we were not expecting to see them and here they've been going on for the last 15 minutes. Yeah. This is a gift, truly, a of gift. nature. Yes, it is. <laughs> I'm so beholden. This is a great getaway for travelers to unwind in nature, to explore the ancient way of life of a unique people. The Garo Hills, a land of enigmatic culture with a history tracing back to several thousand years. I'm visiting one of the last remaining Songsarik villages in the Garo Hills to witness one of the most popular rituals and celebration of the Songsariks. Hi. Hi, how do you do? Fine, I'm fine. Wonderful to meet you. Same here. Same. And I've read every page of your book. Oh, thank you so much. There's still plenty to learn, actually. I'm still learning. I'm still in the process of discovering so much. Amazing. I think there's a need to conserve our culture and tradition before it just dissipates. Yeah, I totally agree. I think the many um, cultures that are embedded within this culture are still yet to be discovered. This place, Chidaugre, is one of the few remaining villages that still follow the indigenous uh, yeah. culture and religion. So I think it's good that before it actually dies out and mm. perhaps for the next generation we need to keep it. There are other aspects of the culture which I think you'd be interested in, such as the uh, Noka Atukde, the typical Garo house. Oh, okay. Perhaps you can have a look. Yeah, please. Yeah. Wonderful. Dr. Ramona, a professor at the NEHU University in Tura, is the author of the book on Songsariks, Beliefs and Practices. This book is an in-depth study of the ancient Garo way of life. Please come in. Wow. Okay. So, so beautifully built. This is the typical uh, Garo house. We call it Nukat. Okay. And this is the Lovely. place where the Nukma Lovely. lives. Yeah. And uh, he's going to perform some rituals here. Right. With offerings for the gods. Okay, this is a special ritual happening today. Uh, yes. And Wonderful. So, they're going to... I think we can have a seat too. Yeah. In all religious ceremonies, sacrifices were essential to call on ancestral spirits. They had to be invoked for births, marriages, deaths, and also for a good harvest and for the welfare and protection of the community. So
songs are ex show reverence to the ancestors by offering food to the departed souls during this festival the pouring of rice beer and incense burning are rituals performed on the first day by the priest Performed inside the house of the chieftain, these rituals begin the festival. Wangala is a festival to celebrate the harvest and to thank Mrs. Saljong, the god. providing nature's bounties and ensuring prosperity after the harvest I feel privileged to witness and participate in this special time for these people Only a very few villages today follow the traditional religion the song sarek its beliefs and practices this village is one of the last strongholds of these ancient beliefs the only link to a culture that is thousands of years old these are the guardians of the rich oral history in one of the remotest villages of garo hills Nagaland is one of the smallest states of India but the rewards of coming to Nagaland are huge. I'm traveling to Eastern Nagaland to Chizami village. When we are working on agro biodiversity when we are working on uh, knowledge sharing it is not only like exchanging grains and exchanging seeds but it is also bonding communities. This paddy fields you see it belongs to the people of Chizami it is called Phobole. and these are 2 300 years old more than you know 2 3 centuries i think it's very important for us to question these notions and to try and bring back our indigenous textiles <laughs> 